I want to just kind of talk to you today and have a teaching as we continue in 1 John um, chapter 2 and just kind of uh, continuing the series of fellowship in the Lord and the truth of Christ. But there's a couple of things that was that's on my heart that I really want to talk to you about. Um, one of the things that happened was that, you know, I got born again when I was about 15 years old. And so um, my grandfather founded a church. My family members was, was part of church. But um, there was a lot of things going on that I did not understand. And that was the kingdom of God. I didn't really have a, uh, I just knew how to be a Baptist. Amen. But I really didn't understand the concept of, of the kingdom of God. And so as I grew in God and I stopped, you know, hanging out in the church and being in the choir and meeting different Christians, you know, and I got born again when I was 13 years old, I did find something missing in my Christian walk. And I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I, I noticed that I see a lot of things missing in other Christians too, in, in their lives. And I'm, I was trying to find a difference, and I guess I saw the difference between membership and being a son of God. And what is the difference between being a member of a church and walking in the title of being a Christian, walking in the title of being a Baptist, Episcopalian, a Catholic, a holiness, and what it is to really be a son of God, to really understand what it is to be a Christian. And then as I start to read and read books on Christianity, you know, I found a disparity between the life that I was living and the life that the Bible preached about in the Word of God. You know, Jesus told the women at the well that I have water that once you get it, you will have no need of anything else. And she said, well, give me this water. And I, I thought about the need of Christians and how come we are so needy? How come we talk a good game? But our life is lacking power and we have power moves, you know what I'm saying? And I can... I think some people right now, if I said, you know, your Christianity or your walk is not full of power, they would absolutely deny it because they would begin to recite other things that they do in church. Um, you know, being a mother of church or deacon of church or trustee of the church, you know, and it's just so full of works, you know, and then they use the works as a banner. I have too. And um, I have developed through the Holy Spirit. That's a real sense of hunger and a thirst that I want to be like God. I want to live my life on this planet like Jesus Christ and to live it to the full. And I think that's the struggle of, of, of everyday Christianity is to live it to the full. This abundant life that he talks about, this uh, abundant living, this walking in power. And um, something happened to me many years ago I can almost say about 28 years ago, 30 years ago, that I was praying to the Lord. I was in the basement. I was in District Heights, Maryland. And the Lord, you know, just kind of gave me a word to me that to marry my people, I want you to marry people. And I was just kind of like wondering how that was going to get done. And then he gave me a, another statement, maybe a couple years later, is uh, this is what I want you to do, Blaine. I want you to tell people how to walk in the Lord, which is, this is the way of the Lord, walk ye in it. This is the way of the Lord. So how do you do this way in the Lord? How do you walk in the Lord? What, what are the parameters and the steps that it takes for people to walk in God correctly with power? And so it really comes down to two things in my life that you know the Lord has called me to do. One is to preach and to lead into authentic Christianity, with the ups and downs, the bumps, and and the hurts, and the pain, but also the victories, and the healings, and how to walk in Christianity, and which is practical Christianity, and then is also being authentic. How do you become an authentic Christian, and what is authentic Christianity? And so today, I just want to touch on a little bit today of how do you do this? How do you walk in? authentic Christianity and what is the cost 
of being a Christian. And, and, and what is Christianity? What is Christianity? And what is this life God is trying to get us to do and to live with power, and not half power, but to do it with a whole heart? And, and what is the cost of being a Christian? And you know, the Bible said, and Jesus said, come buy of me, but not with money. So, so, so what are you buying? What is this Holy Ghost experience? What is this born again experience? And how does that help you to walk in authentic Christianity? And I believe that this is where it's crucial and I've seen that many Christians lack. And let's talk about the scripture, and then I go back to the exhortation of it. We in First John chapter two, verse twenty-six. Amen. And you can go and get your Bibles and read that, or you can write it down. Uh, maybe by the time um, I pre-record this, and I'm going to send it out again, and I repost it, the scripture would be on the bottom of your screen. Um, before we go, I'll just let you know that you know this is Commission Worldwide Church, located in uh, Wake Forest, North Carolina. I am um, Elder Blaine Van. I, I'm married to a wonderful, beautiful woman named Joyce Van. Uh, we got beautiful children, and we got extraordinary grandchildren. You know that's right. And so, I just like to put that out there. That um, I work for a living, and um, my money's coming out through the church. My money comes in. Um, through me just having a job, amen. So I know the struggles of being a Christian in a real world, in a real world setting on the job when people there are not Christians and working in sometimes a very heathen, unbelieving atmosphere. And how to maintain your Christian walk and your Christian witness. Listen, listen, maintain your Christian witness and that your life, when they look at your life from every angle, they know that you believe something bigger than yourselves. And that's what I'm talking about today. And so he says this, these things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaching you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. And so that's New King James Version. I always encourage you to read it out the message, read it out the NIV, and I encourage you to read out all the translations you can get so you can get a more powerful and fuller understanding what Jesus is saying here. But I want to jump down to the middle of the verse and just kind of work my way around it. It's like jumping in the pool. You know, you can stop from the edge, which I don't like because the water too cold, but just jump in the middle and we're just going to fish ourselves around here. I want you to focus on this part of the verse that says, but verse 27, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. So, John is saying that there's an anointing in us that teaches us all things, and we don't need a teacher. So at first hand, that sounds very confusing, because one of the fivefold gifts is a teacher. So if the Holy Spirit teaches us all things, why do we need teachers? Why do you need somebody to teach you how to tie your shoe when you're little? Shoot, you need somebody to teach you how to cross the street, because if it was, wasn't for that, you run right in the middle of the street, because you have, and your mama had to pull you back and teach you to do what? Look both ways, right? That didn't come intuitively. You wasn't born with that. Somebody had to teach you to look both ways, right? Somebody had to teach you how to eat. Somebody had to teach you how to slow down to eat because you eat too fast. Somebody had to teach you how to drink water or you would drink soda all the time. Somebody had to teach you how to run. Somebody had to teach you how to, how to, how to lift weights. And I'm in the process right now teaching people how to be married because people do not know how to be married. It doesn't come instinctively. You have to be taught how to love somebody. Amen. You just, as a human, you just don't love people. As a human, you're selfish, right? And so we're not saying that in a bad way. We just have to acknowledge that as human beings, we need to be taught some things. But yet, the Bible just says, you have the unction, you have anointing, and no man needs to teach you. 
So, so what is John saying? And we have bodies, uh, people in the body of Christ that are teachers. Uh, we have preacher teachers, men who love to preach, man, that word. I'm, I love a good preacher. I'm telling you right now. Man, they sweat and they hoop and they holler, man. I love it. I'm not that style, right? But I love that style, right? Because it inspires me. But I also like those who teach, too, that sit down and break down the word because the Bible says this word I found and I did what? I did eat it. And so I like that, too. And so I love to listen to Jake's sometimes, and sometimes I like, like listen to Charles Stanley. Sometimes I like listen to Joyce Myers. Sometimes I like to listen to Derek Prince, old school, and there's some other ones that I, I love and I glean from. And so God has put it in the body of Christ men who know how to break down the word. And some of them you really do need to listen to. Some of them you don't. And this is when we go back to the word. There is anointing in you that teaches you beyond what man can teach you. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Men can teach you some things up to a point. But there is a spiritual lesson. There is a spiritual life that only the Holy Ghost can teach you. The only the Holy Spirit, which abides in you, that can teach you. So, Teachers are wonderful for people who don't have the Holy Spirit. Amen? You don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't have a relationship with God. But my God, somebody need to teach you how to drive. You know, that, you know, and that's God watching out for the planet. Amen? So he put people, men, women, children in the earth to teach us how to walk this way and how to live without killing each other. Amen? And so God placed teachers on earth. But he said, there's another type of teacher. Amen. There's another type of teacher that teaches us how to live with God. There's another type of teacher that teaches how to walk with God. There's another type of teacher that, that, that can touch our mind in a way that a man's words cannot do. And God says, this teacher I'm going to place in you. This is the teaching of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to take this teacher and inside, in your belly, God says, will come streams of living waters. And this teacher, this unction from God, the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity, is in you. And because he's in you, he knows you. A lot of people say, ain't nobody know me. You don't know me. That's one of the things me and my wife always laugh about. You don't know me. I've been living here for 30 years. And it's still things that I'm learning about her. Amen. Because she's a complicated woman that no one understands. Amen. <laughs> and, um, and amen. And she brings joy to me. And um, each of us are different. We was watching the movie I, Robot the other day. Each, is, each of us are unique. Amen. And each of us got a different thumbprint and a different mental wavelengths and stuff like that. And, you know, we identify different bodies by our dental records. Amen. And so God has made each of us unique. And sometimes in this world, we forget how unique we actually are. And, you know, when you get out at work or get a job, man, you part of the herd. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, like in Amazon, they have a warehouse. You know, a thousand people work at this, this one Amazon, a thousand people. And they all move in boxes, and you're all part of the herd, right? And you can feel that way that you're part of the herd. But God, but God had put his stamp on you. And so he placed teachers in your life until you get filled with the teacher, the great teacher. And we often forget that we have a great teacher that abides, and this is what John is saying, that lives, the word abide, dwells in us. That means this Holy Spirit has set up permanent residence. This teacher, this comforter that, that, that teaches us how to get along with humans. How to get along with, and that's the biggest problem. How do you get along with a human? Because you find out a lot of your problems come along with that. It's not how you get along with animals or bees or, you know, insects or even weather. But this Holy Spirit, this unction teaches us how to get along with people, and how to get along with God. And so this Holy Spirit uniquely 
targets you because this Holy Spirit knows you. The Bible said he knows how many hairs you have on top of your head. Now think of that for a minute. I mean, I can count mines, but some of y'all can't count yours. Do you know how many hairs you have on top of your head? And the answer is absolutely not. You ain't got a clue. But they say the Holy Spirit knows. See, God said that so you understand how intimate he knows you. He knows what you like. He knows what you want. And this is one of the most important things. He knows what you need before you know what you need. He knows that you don't need that extra piece of pie. He knows that you need to walk. He knows when you need to sleep more. God knows that more than that. He knows what type of spouse you need to have. I'm telling you, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know, have no idea what you have need of without the Holy Spirit. The only thing you can do is guess what you have before the Lord speaks to you. You can only guess what college to go to. You only could guess what house to buy. And I see people who live in the guess world. They guess, and then, they, and then when they get it, they have buyer's remorse. They believe that this was the house that they're supposed to get. And then when they get it, they find out that they can't even climb the stairs. So was God wrong? Did God want you to have another type of house? But you seen what your sister had, you seen what your brother had, and now you're trying to live by the law of the Joneses, keeping up with your neighbors. And because you live by that law, you find yourself, listen, you find yourself in many hurtful wrongs. And now you keep trying to dig your way out of this relationship that you have no business in, right? And it's all because of one thing, and I'm gonna share this with you as we go, because today, um, lesson is that you have the anointed in you and how do you press forward how do you go forward in your life and live the abundant life so here is a key scripture i want you to go to malachi and and, and listen malachi is right before matthew and so i want you to go there and as you're going to find out in your walk with the Lord, there are going to be times where you level up. There are going to be times where God speaks to you in such a way that actually changes the dimensions and parameters of your life. This, what I'm about to share with you, is one of those scriptures that literally changed my life and helped me to live authentic Christianity how to be a Christian and how to have the life of Christianity. And this one keeps me from falling to a lot of pits. And I still fall in pits. But I know that the pits that I fall in is not as deep as they would have been without the Lord. And so, before we read it, have you ever heard of the term that person needs Jesus. You ever heard of that term? Boy, I wish they had Jesus. What do that mean? I wish they had Jesus. Is it, do you wish they was born again? Do you wish they was a member of the church? And, and some people say who people are Christians. So, and you got a Christian that do you wrong. And you say, boy, I sure wish they had Jesus. <laughs> I wish they had Jesus. And so what does that mean to have Jesus? I want to share this scripture to you right here. Let me see if I can find it. Amen. It is Malachi, which is the last book in the Old Testament. And right before the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 16. I want you to underline it. I want you to remember it. I want you to know how to find it. I want you to obey it. Honestly, I want you to obey it because this is the way of life. This is true Christianity. This is what Jesus died for. I'm telling you, this is what he died for. So that our sins might be removed, that we come in good relationship with God, 
So you can receive this unction, and then once you receive this unction, how to walk in the way of the Lord. And it goes like this. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce, for it covers one garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, listen to what he's saying now. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. Take heed to your spirit. This one little key nugget is key to living in the kingdom because you have received an anointing from God. You have received the Holy Spirit, but we do not listen to the unction. We do not take heed to our spirit. And the Bible says this right here. Since you do not take heed to your spirit, he says, you are going to deal treacherously. With who? With your wife? With your children? With the people you're living with? Treacherously is, is let me see, what's one of the words for treacherously? Um, I want to make sure we get this. To be treacherous is to be deceitful and to be unfaithful. Amen. It's to offend. So God is saying, if you live the life of the spirit, and when the spirit man in you alerts you, give you a little prick in your heart, give you the heart, and you don't take notice of that little heart in the spirit, you will become an unfaithful man. You will become an unfaithful woman because you listen not to, not the outward teachers, because outward teachers might deceive you. Outward teachers might say something you misinterpret. Amen. Listen to what I'm saying. But you can't interpret the Holy Ghost inside you because it speaks just to you. So the Bible says, and Jesus says this too, my sheep knows my voice. And you know when God is talking to you. You know it. Now he says here in Malachi, and, and think about this. After Malachi was 400 years of silence, they said, no prophet spoke until John the Baptist came. And, the, and the one of the last things he's saying is that take heed to your spirit. There's one that can teach you that how to live without a man teacher telling you. Your spirit knows the mind of Christ and your spirit man knows you. So take heed to your spirit. To not do, not to be an unfaithful man. Now, I thought about this. I think about this all the time. A lot of people blame God for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And um, people blame God for the murder of the sons mm -hmm. and daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, people say she was on her way to church. She got hit by a car, and they blame and they blame God. They blame God for many hurtful things that go in there. I say, God, how come you didn't tell me? How come you didn't warn me? And I'm saying this, God told you and he warned you when you have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So if one, that's the two difference between a believer and a non-believer. Mm -hmm. Muslims do not have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You know, Buddhists do not have the Holy Ghost. They might have human intuition, but they, ain't, they don't have this anointing that abides, because the only way to get it is by trusting in Jesus Christ. Uh, people who are witches don't have the Holy Ghost. When you're born on this planet, nobody is born with the Holy Ghost. So everyone who does not believe in Jesus Christ does not have this. So they don't have an inward person to teach them all things. These people claim they have another spirit. And my God, they do. They do. There's shamans out there and false prophets, and they got the spirits of the earth. They got demonic spirits that have fallen. So you can, as a human, have a fallen spirit guiding you. Matter of fact, they call guides, guiding you, and you hear the voice, right? Joseph Smith found a daggone another spirit, and he birthed another religion on this planet. 
but he didn't have the unction, the one that John is talking about, that, what did he say, that abideth forever. Now, this unction speaks to you, so you will not deal treacherously, that you will not be a false prophet, that you will not be unfaithful, that you won't be a, a transgressor, that you won't be a destroyer, that you won't be fraudulent, fraudulent, use fraud to get ahead, that you won't cheat, that you won't lie. This is the way of the Lord. And you know when you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing about God, that most people, they probably don't like this about God. God is not yelling at you. Amen? God is, God is not yelling at you. Right. God is speaking to you in a quiet, soft voice. God is like a dove. Now, many people interpret the Holy Spirit is a dove, and the Bible says, no, he's, he's not a bird. He's like, the, he's like a dove. Have you ever walked up on a dove? Right? So you get close, they, they flutter away. They don't come screaming at you. They're not like a hawk. They're not like an eagle. And they liken the Holy Spirit like a dove. And so what you get is man would teach you look both ways, crossing the street. You get ready to cross the street, and the Holy Spirit would be like a dove and just give you a little prick in your heart. Now, here Malachi is saying, take heed to that little prick. Take heed to the little nudge. That's what it is to be a Christian, and that's what it is in Christianity. That is Christianity. That is kingdom of God living. And if you find yourself in confusion a lot, if you find yourself always getting out of the pit, if you find your life just kind of like always in turmoil and always in um, um, trouble, then God sends the Holy Spirit, and that's okay, baby, and God will send the Holy Spirit to guide you into the practical things of Christianity and the practical things of being a son and a daughter of God. This spirit, which I'm talking about, is always telling you to walk in the way of the Lord. This spirit is always leading and guiding you. This spirit would never lead you or never forsake you. And this is the guiding principle of God. Amen. I just want to leave you with that today. Uh, we're going to talk more about that. But just remember that this next week, I really want you to take heed to your spirit and to learn how to do that. And with God's help and the Holy Ghost, I will continue to teach you how to do that. My name is Blaine C. Van. This has been Commission Worldwide. I love you. Uh, like this. Share this. I always say this, that there's people that you can reach that I can't. And you might know people in the Bahamas or Jamaica and other countries that need this word of God. You might have a son or daughter that need to understand that there's an anointing that abides in them that would teach them how to live when they go to college. Amen. And, that they, need, and they need to take heed to the voice of the Lord because this voice would never get you in trouble. God bless you. I love you. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.